Okay, welcome to UA Day 4. Yeah. Okay, uh, traditionally UA has done a trail day and a road day and a trail day and a road day. Today would technically be a road day, but it won't be a road day. So, uh, we got a really cool uh, treat in store for everyone today that Trent has lined up. Um, so, with more on that. We are gonna be putting on some road miles today. And I'll go ahead and reveal that we are gonna go about 120 miles down what I think is the second most beautiful drive of this entire trip. Now what's at the end of that road, I can't really say, but I, what I can tell you is it's totally worth the drive. And then we are gonna turn around and come 120 miles, pretty much right back to where we started. But like I said, it's totally worth the drive. Uh, you know, everybody should be aired up. Uh, and topped off because you know, it's, it's about 240 miles or so. So uh, hopefully we don't have any people, anybody running out of gas like we did yesterday. It's uh, Ultimate Adventure 2019 Day 4. We're still in Alaska. Alaska is a big state and it's a road day, but we're on a dirt road, which uh, seems pretty cool. Road days are often uh, overlooked. There's not a lot of action, but uh, it's pretty hard on the cars to uh, have us soak them in water, beat them up on rocks, drive them through mud, and then drive them hundreds of miles on a uh, improved roads at 30, 35, 40, 45, 60 miles an hour. So it's still fairly early in the morning here on day four and we've already had some dirt. Uh, we've actually been chasing the Copper River, which I guess has one of the largest salmon runs in all of Alaska. Uh, we're here in the historic town of Chitina, which will actually become significant when we, uh, when we reach our destination at the end of the road. It's an absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous drive and it's actually going to get even better. Go for it, Lonnie. JR. Kennecott River and it's uh, kind of like Land's End for a lot of people. A lot of cars won't even take this road. It's perfectly good for us, of course. Right. 
Well, welcome to the town of McCarthy. We are literally at the end of the road. You can't go any further than this. We're actually walking over the Kennecott River. We're gonna get on some vans that we've specially arranged for the group to take us to the historic Kennecott Mine. And this is an enormous operation. It's truly impressive, but the cool part about it is because it was so remote, when they shut the mine down, there really wasn't a lot of looting or, or anything like that. So it was very, very well preserved and only the weather and time have have caused some of the decay that's, that's taken place. Hi, Vern. Coming. There's a whole other way. I do know that they shut everything down in 1938. They told everybody to get on the last train and get out or they would miss it. So they totally left Kennecott as a ghost town. And it wasn't rediscovered until the 50s. But uh, back in the mining day, McCarthy was where all the workers had fun. That's where the bar was, that's where they drank, that's where the brothels were. And then Kennecott was just for the workers and the higher up management that lived up there with their families. Cool, so it's day four of UA, and this is our road day, but we always do something interesting, even on our days off. So we're here at the Kennecott Mine, and uh, we're actually right next to a receding glacier. So the white, the white ice is up there, and even though it looks like um, mine tailings, it's not. That's an actual glacier down there. Um, and then uh, these, are, these are some of the old uh, mine buildings. I'm not a mine expert, so I don't know which one's which, but uh, our bus driver was telling us on the way up here that this is the largest or the tallest wooden structure in North America. It's 14 stories tall from, from down here all the way up there. So I can only imagine what it was like when it was operating. Look at the arc on that. There's like not a, a 90 degree angle in this whole thing. Man. Now backwards while resetting the alphabet. We're in the powerhouse. So this this facility powered all the mining operations and all the associate uh, buildings and stuff around here. So it's just incredible. I mean, these things are enormous. And just think, that, like, this is uh, Power Specialty, New York, uh, the lower section of it is from Erie, Pennsylvania. You know, it had to be incredibly expensive to get here. Once it was here, it was probably almost worthless in terms of scrap because the transportation costs would be just ridiculous. That's why they're still here. You know, the, the only reason they're still here is because the, the cost of remove all this stuff is worth more than the scrap is. Still just incredible. I mean, you can still smell, you can still smell the machine oil and stuff like that in this building. Really, really cool. All we can do is think about the people that had to haul this stuff in, man. It's not easy today to haul stuff up here. I can only imagine what it took back then. A lot of iron. We're gonna need to uh, whip up a little article. That's uh, you know what? I actually I brought my uh, my mobile typewriter. So. I think this really nails what I picture as Alaska with giant scapes in the background and glaciers to your right and, and forests to the left and animals everywhere and uh, a real rustic town. Hey tree, there's baby bear cubs in the road in front of me. I have a feeling they'll be gone by the time you get down, but
One of the highlights of this drive is the Gillahana Trestle. This was constructed about, I believe, 1911 or so. It's 880 feet long. It was constructed in the middle of winter, and believe it or not, it took only eight days to finish. It was up for a year, it burned, and they completely rebuilt it. In that time, it only took them 11 days. That's pretty amazing. Well, after leaving McCarthy in the Kennecott Mine, we essentially retraced our steps all the way back to the historic town of Chitina. Now, it's a neat little town in its own right. Not only is it a cool little fishing village for the nearby Copper River, it also served as an important point during the construction of the railroad. Voodoo recovery rope. It's full in a Bronco that ran out of gas. So it's the end of day four, and it's traditionally a road day, but of course, I had to throw a little uh, change up in the mix, and we actually hit a trail. It's called Fish Lake Trail. Went a few miles up that, had to get some rock crawling uh, in. I was hoping to get us here before dark. We ended up getting here right at dark, so hopefully these guys practice setting up their tents in the dark because that's what they did. We're cooking some food, having a couple of beverages. Um, we better get to, to bed relatively early tonight, though, because tomorrow is going to be a long one. One of the best feet of driving that I've seen. Well, that's Fred. We pretend like we don't know him. You ready? I'm going to jump on the rail here and you're going to fall off. But there's ice underneath all of what you see here. And what you see is different areas where the glaciers just dump all of its load, is what it's called. And it's called a glacial moraine, I believe. I'm a total fake geologist, but I'm trying. There's a bush plain. Beautiful. What a nice day, huh? Water kicks. 